What's up, you crazy fucks? This is another episode of the Metalhead Offensive Podcast. I'm your host, Chris, and I got my boy Pete here, as always. Word. And uh, this is our episode number three, man. Three. I, yeah, we did we did put up the demo of uh, me doing some solo work a couple days ago, so if you haven't got a chance to check that out yet, go ahead and do, do so. And uh, this will be our third official podcast, this is kind of cool. We've been getting a lot of cool reviews, and uh, a lot of people saying they're digging the show, and people who, uh, who are... Um, Listen to it at work and saying that it helps them get through today. Or like I said, my friend Amanda, she listened to it while she's cleaning the house. So uh, that's definitely a cool thing. We definitely didn't think it was going to get this far. So um, we appreciate everybody out there. And uh, we um, we do this for you guys. Like I said, this is uh, mainly just for our entertainment and yours. For and the we most hope part. you like it. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to hit us up. Yeah, actually, that's that's not, that's a great thing. If you have any problems with the show or you know things we could do better, or even just want to tell us to go fuck ourselves, hit us up on our Facebook pages if you know us personally. Go to the, if you haven't done it already, go to the Metalhead Offensive Facebook page. Go in like that, and you'll see all of our fucked up shit throughout the week. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, dro- feel free to drop us a line on our on our, on our emails as well. It's uh, the Metalhead Offensive at gmail dot com. Uh, we both have links to it on our phone, so we'll be able to answer your emails right away. Uh, yeah, so as always, we have a new beer of the week, and uh, this was a tough one. We've tried to do, we're trying to mix it up here and do different beers and try different kinds of beers and stuff. And I mainly kind of want to stick to the craft stuff because everybody knows what Miller Lite and fucking Bud Light are and all that other bullshit, and that's getting old. We need to start reverting back a little bit and start getting to the people that, you know, there used to be uh, 1,600 breweries in the, in the 20s, and now there's, you know, only four or five major, there used to be just four or five major ones when Coors and Miller and all, all those guys and Budweiser yeah, and bought everybody and, out. Yeah. No, people are starting to get back into craft beers, which is a cool thing. There's a lot of local beers around here that are That's really funny. Cool. Anheuser-Busch actually got bought. What's that? Anheuser-Busch. Now that's right. They're owned by, by a InBev. Belgian company. Yeah, InBev. so like that's why you can't get fucking free beer at Busch Gardens anymore. And who actually? They're owned by the company that makes uh, Stella. So I think that's InBev that, too. That really makes me mad. Yeah, it's, it's like the last. Yeah, it's kind of sad, dude. It's like dude, a great American company like that. Like when you think of America, you, for yeah. some reason you think of Budweiser. I mean, they just sponsor fucking everything. So I mean, I guess. Everybody else on the planet. So now when I go to Bush Gardens, I flick them all off and call them sellouts, and then I drink their beer anyway. Yeah, obviously so. Um, but like when people think of America, they just think that we're just a lazy ass drunks, <laughs> just because Budweiser fucking sponsors everything. Mm, yeah, I but know. The, um, it's anyway. not even the best beer in America. I don't care what anybody says. I had that argument with somebody a while ago. They're like, dude, that's the best American beer. I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Why? Because they're the most fucking commercialized Popular, yeah. in your fucking face. Because they make they have 90 the best million marketing team today? that make some decent commercials here and there. So you're going to tell me they're the best beer? No way, Why? Dude. Because they, they got great... Clydesdales that make touching little heartfelt huggy moment fucking Yeah, fuck that. Every time I go see Clydesdale, they have a fucking heart on. Yeah. And they got a boner the size of fucking Cincinnati. It's and like I think my they're getting ready to fucking fuck me. arm. Fuck that. It's like fuck a, your Clydesdale. Like a baby's arm holding an apple. Like, it's fucking, that's fucking nuts, dude. I, <laughs> and like, when, like when you used to, the Clydesdales used to be at Bush Gardens, we would go there and fuck and like it would be, they would just smell. And half the time they wouldn't even be in the goddamn thing. So what's the point of having them there? You ever see that tattoo? It's talking about a baby's hand holding an apple. <laughs> That's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a tattoo of someone's baby holding their finger. Oh, it, it looks, looks like, like a, a hand dick. grabbing a dick. It looks like somebody, like a little baby grabbing some dick. Dude, like, that's it just looks like just... a hand grabbing a giant penis. <laughs> it's like, dude, really? That's what you get for paying like $50 man. and a box of cigarettes for a fucking tattoo. <laughs> this is what happens when you do tattoos at home. Oh, so bad. But anyway, um, <laughs> as uh, we went to the, uh, I went to uh, the Coastal Liquor Store here in Newport Ritchie, right at, right down the street from the Wing House here off Main Street, and uh, definitely a cool place. They got a lot of craft beers there too. Um, any liquor, any good size liquor store will have their fair share of craft brews. But uh, I kind of like this one. They got a lot of different stuff, a lot of different companies, all packed into a big small or a small package. Um, this week's beer of the week is call is from the brewing company called Southern Tier Brewing Company out of. Uh, what was it? New York. Which oh, find, yeah, totally. Which I yeah. find kind of weird because it says Southern Tier. Maybe do they have a Northern Tier? I mean, that would right. lead you to believe that, right? Maybe they're the Southern part of New York. I don't know, like don't Long know, Island or something. Lakewood, New York. <laughs> so, been around since the seventies, but definitely um, the beer we're drinking tonight is the uh, Four Twenty Two Pale Wheat Ale. Now, we expected this to be kind of heavy, almost kind of like a Hefeweizen or even like a uh, yeah. A Blue I thought Moon it was gonna be a hard. Beer. I thought it was gonna be a hearty, you know, thick wheat. Uh, like you know, like beer. a Belgian, you something, Belgian wheat or something, yeah. Something and, you're definitely uh, going to have to fucking try to work off tomorrow. This is actually really light. I mean, I guess it's kind of, duh, pale, we you know, but still. I it's a good it was, beer. I think it's a good flavorful beer. I thought beer. it was going to be a heavy beer with like a lot of hops, like an IPA type flavor, but no, this is really, this is almost actually like a light wheat beer. Yeah, I think, I honestly do, I do, I think it is a really good beer, though. Definitely a good beer just to check out and have something different in the house besides all the other normal stuff that everybody I mean, I'm sure buys. it still has as many calories as a normal 
Are you fucking watching the weight? Like, I am. Well, you know, dude, fuck? now I'm going to have to jerk off seven times tomorrow instead of three. Well, so. Switch hands. That way you don't get one big forearm and then the other forearm's like fucking little tiny. Like Popeye. Like you see those guys in the gym, they just work out their upper body and they have, like, yeah. legs. They have legs that look like fucking pencils. Yeah. And then we guys, that, they're just fucking, man. That's the worst is when you go to the gym there's always that one fucking guy. That he one takes it way, way too seriously. Guido motherfucker sitting in the corner, like grunting to himself. You're like, the like, dude, fuck is this guy like doing? you're you're working out next to some girl on a treadmill. She doesn't want to hear your ball barking. I work out in Tarpon, and there's a, <laughs> there's this always this older Greek guy that's probably in his fifties that comes you, you, in. You know they're sweating fucking anchovies. It's gross. <laughs> I, I, okay, first of all, let me explain this. It smells like Subaki in this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Who put the fucking baklava in? Uh, no. <laughs> I have a lot of Greek friends. Please don't fucking... I don't want to hear any bullshit on how we're hating on Greek people. We're not. And they all don't stink, but nah. there's some other that do. Okay, I have a lot of f- cool Greek friends. My boy Jamie Lakakis, the good guy. Christina. And all people I went to school with. All Greek. All fucking badass. But there are... There are typical... Stereotypical assholes out there that give everybody else a bad name. Well, the guy I was talking about, he's... I, he's actually kind of a break. I, I kind of like him now. At first I was like... Fuck, but now he's actually kind of entertaining. Is, he is just it, comes in and sings old, like, Greek songs. To himself, or just I don't know around. Greek, so I don't know what the fuck he's saying. But he'll just be Probably in the corner working, way. and he'll be singing, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, at first, I was like, you know, I kind of laughed about it, and now it's like, I'd rather hear that than fucking is that, like, is that, Jersey Shore motherfucker in the corner. you think that corner. that's his version of Eye of the Tiger or something? I guess, dude. It's like the <laughs> Greek version or something. <laughs> I have the pusty. Like I don't if, know. Like if you if you can't listen to Eye of the Tiger and be totally motivated to go out and fucking lift like nine million pounds that day, you got a fucking no soul. I'm sorry. Like he's probably singing the, the maybe Greek dude version. Eye of Zeus. It's the Greek version or something. Yeah, Eye of Zeus or something. <laughs> I don't know, dude. But I, don't I, don't know. Know. I like Tarpon. The I land like of Poseidon. <laughs> um, no, something stupid shit like that. That was us fucking up. But uh, like I said, anyway, the beer of the week is the uh, 422 Pale Wheat Ale from the Southern Tier Brewing Company out of Lakewood, New York. Um, definitely uh, definitely cool beer. If you're into craft beers, definitely go check out. Uh, get off the Miller Lights and the, and the Bud Lights and the other stuff. Go out, try different beers, try your dark beers. If you're going to be a beer person, a guy, we're beer guys, um, definitely go out and check this beer. Um, I haven't found it only at this place, but definitely worth a check out. Um, next week, but though, Pete is getting the beer. I have chosen the last three times. And uh, obviously, I've been choosing reds and pale ales and stuff. I think Pete, we're going to try a stout next week. You want me to bring it up a notch? <clears throat> I think we, I think we need to kick it up just a little bit. Because I can bring you beer that puts fucking hair on your asshole. I can bring you some good shit. I don't know if I really have hair on my asshole, but I don't want to. Will find now? It. Like I don't, I don't get a mirror and fucking like go underneath my deal and say, "Oh man, I got a hairy asshole." I do, that doesn't work. I don't. Uh, I, yeah. like, well, I guess you could just tell. There's, me. Is there like a litmus test? Do we check beforehand? Well, drink I usually the beer, and take then go? my asshole hair and then braid it to my. To my pubes, and it forms like a ball hammock for my nuts. It's like one dread that goes from my. Sh- Jesus Christ! <laughs> and then, you put like li- then you put like little beads, like girls use for like necklaces and stuff, like on the end of it. Let's not. Let's not. It's not. Yo, oh, you've gone much? too far yeah, now, bro. Sorry, too much. I apologize. Adding beads to my ball hammock. You're out of line, sir. <laughs> Excuse me if I went a little overboard on that one. I mean, I think after we mentioned ball hammock with our asshole and, and taint hair, that it was kind of no holds barred. So, uh, my yeah. my my balls kind of look like Lejean's head huh? from Seven Dust. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow. All right, back on task. <laughs> yeah, back on task. Um, but uh, uh, also this week's show, we're um, as I, for people that are on the Facebook page, I did mention that we're making some. Uh, changes with the podcast. Uh, we are um, not necessarily changing the format of what we do. We are just basically trying to put everything that we're going to do into a smaller, tighter package, and that way we keep we keep you guys listening. For this is the only moment. time a woman's going to want to hear that. <laughs> 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 they always want the big the big one, and then you hear all that bullshit about oh, it's not the size you know it's the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. It takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat, my friend. Okay, <laughs> uh, but. Um, but anyway, like I said, we uh, God, we have a, we t- we tear off fucking. We have yeah, old. we uh, have just gone balls to the wall to nowhere <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, but definitely, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking basically um, what we're going to what we're doing into a small, smaller, tighter package. <coughs> Not doing almost a two-hour show. We're going to try to cut it down between an hour, an hour and five minutes, and basically just talk about what we're going to be talking about we, um, for that amount of time. That way, you guys can listen longer and you can enjoy. 
you know, listen to it in the car on your way to work or cleaning or, you know, doing stuff at work, which is uh, what most people do podcasting for. So, um, but, uh, all right, we're good. Enough about the beer and all the content bullshit. Um, basically, we're going to get into going in with our music reviews as we do every week. Um, not really, we're not really going to be doing bands. We're just going to talk about different stuff. Um, I don't know if you notice this or not, but um, metal's trying to, is starting to make its way back into at least into this town. Um, as far as uh, you don't really see a whole lot of hip hop clubs, or you don't hear about them as much, and I think they're kind of fading away. I used to work at a few of them as a bouncer back in the day, and all of those clubs are closed now. And like the clubs that that changed are like doing like top forty, uh, having yeah. bands play and stuff like that. And those and like for more of like the older adult it's like just genre, pop thing like the now, adult contemporary yeah. stuff basically. So, um, but what I think another cool thing is, um, but you can start seeing metal starting to show up at more and more places now, more and more. Clubs, even just not even just necessarily here in Port Ritchie in the Pasco area, or even going a little further south in Clearwater, Tarpon, and Palm Harbor areas. Well, Tampa's always had a good history of. of well, of Tampa's like metal the death metal rock. capital yeah, of the world, I mean, anyway. So it's kind of nice that you know. I mean, Nathan Explosion from Newport Ritchie. I mean, yeah. In case you guys don't know who this Tampa is, like hardcore fucking heavy metal. The scene guys that do Death been. Clock, like the guy that does Death Clock, Brandon Small, is from fucking Newport Ritchie. Like to me, that's crazy. But yeah, to, that blew my mind when I first found out about that. I was like, get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, like, that's Nobody nuts. ever gets out of this fucking show. Nobody ever gets out of this town. It's definitely not doing fucking shows on the Cartoon Network. Yeah. Um, but, uh... It shows you how <clears throat> fucked you get living here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Um, but another thing is, um, a Bourbon Street, <clears throat> for everybody who, uh, is not familiar with the area, Bourbon Street is a uh, nightclub here in Newport Ritchie, right next to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, another, another bar called Insomniacs, where, um, they have a lot of a lot of metal bands play there too, but they have um, every Wednesday, which is today, um, they have uh, Metal Wednesdays, which they have you know they'll try to get a band go up and play some metal for everybody. A lot of metalheads show up. I do a lot of beer specials and shit, so that, that's a kind of a new thing that started happening. I think it's definitely worth uh, giving a check into. Um, so you know, obviously, you go and support your local metal scene. Go and support your any local scene whatsoever. We, you know, those guys need to eat, and they you know they sell their merch and they do it. You know, they spend five thousand dollars worth of gear to fucking do play a hundred dollar show. I mean, a lot of these guys don't really make any money doing this gig, so um, go out there, support your local, and, and, and occasionally sleep with a band guy. I mean, I think I think you need, <laughs> I think women you need to stop being so secluded with your vaginas and you're fuck gonna, a guy. You're gonna keep pushing that, aren't you? Yes, I am. That's like your. Uh, That's my thing. Like if you ran for office, that would be your. Sleep with a musician, mm-hmm. like like twenty, like I don't know, say twenty thirteen. <clears throat> I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, you know, pointing it out that you seem. That I, I think Chris wants to tell you all to fuck a band member. I, I think I just did. I think you want to tell him again. Go fuck a band guy. Or somebody that's really into metal. See, you're passionate about this. I'm passionate. I like that. See, the, there's nothing it's wrong. conviction. So convict your fucking pussy to some dick and get to work. Exactly. That's how that Stimulate would... the economy of another <laughs> man's penis. Obviously, we're just bullshit, and we don't want anybody sleeping around like being all whores and everything. Um, no, no, we do. But... Obviously, <clears throat> the point we're trying to make is support your local scene. Head down there, see the shows. Five or ten bucks, you're going to see five or six bands. You know, so get out there, support them, show, show them some love. And uh, <clears throat> I also, before we get humping on other shit that we're going to talk about tonight, I did kind of fuck up last week, and we talked about this previous to the show. Um, as you know, my brother Josh is in a band um, called Hoist the Colors. He does, he does another couple other projects too. He's in a punk band called Pig Pen, which used to be huge around here. I think they still are. And then he has his own solo project called Hype, which is kind of like the Hollywood Undead sort of style stuff. And um, he's also going to be shooting a music video at Bourbon Street next Wednesday as part of Metal Wednesdays there too, which I'm going to be going to after the show. So, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so anyway. <clears throat> last week on the last week's show, I told I said that Josh's show was on Saturday in Insomniacs when it was really was on fucking Friday, and uh, I got some flack for that. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pookie. We I didn't mean to fucking show up. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, Josh's show was on Friday, and I heard they killed it. He couldn't make it out there because I had my son that day. So um, I heard that they fucking kill it like they always do. I mean, that band really knows how to fucking throw down. And we talked about this last week where you know they you know when they go up on fucking stage because they that, that's the band you're there to see. So now you, you make always me want to go see them. They're fucking amazing, dude. I'm telling you. Mike Manning, the fucking lead vocalist, is a f- is fucking super cool and a fucking damn good vocalist. Everybody up there is a fucking badass. So definitely go check those guys out. You know, Go look them up on Facebook. Find out when they're playing again. I know they're playing again soon. Um, and then Josh's music project, Hype. Go check that out as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. This fucking beer is making my throat clog up. Good beer, though, but it's not making my throat clog up. This is one of those beers where you can just drink a ton of it and not even know. 
we're what two or three in yeah. so far. I don't even feel yeah. shit. Not even eating since fucking. Well, like I said, it's like white. It's almost like a light wheat ale. It's, yeah, it's you know, weird you can, though. You can drink quite a bit of this. You know, sometimes you get those heavier <clears> beers and you're like, you have like two or three, and you're like, all right, dude, I feel like I just fucking ate a seventy-two ounce steak. You know, <laughs> I feel like the floor of a taxi cab, basically. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I feel like a whore at the end of her shift. <laughs> But she's all used up and just walking away in shame. She's full of shame. In her vagina. Her vagina's ready to fall out, and by that time it's been pounded so many times it looks like an old catcher's mitt. Ugh, Jesus. Old rotten cabbage. Gross. Like, Jesus, lady, you can pick up an apple with that. It bends over and a fucking you... gallon of milk pours out. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you tuck that in, you're going to get it caught on a tripwire or something. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to set off a mine. <laughs> This is a dangerous place. You're going to set a mine off, woman. Come on. Snail trails. <laughs> Snail trail. That's probably the worst thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, um, we uh, we did review a couple bands last week, and uh, I don't know if you guys went out and bought the new Killswitch record. I'm a huge Killswitch fan. <coughs> For people that know me personally, I'm a huge fucking Killswitch fan, and I just found out from my buddy Travis that they're coming with As I Lay Dying June 3rd to the House of Blues in Orlando. I don't care what you're doing, if you're a Killswitch fan, or even an As I Lay Dying fan, fucking take the day off, or take the next day off, and yeah, fucking go really see the show. Yeah, you really want to take the next day off, probably. Yeah, Especially I'm, I, if you got to drive to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, because it's mean, an hour and a half hump if you're you know, depending on where you're coming Live it from. up and do a little bit of party and have a couple beers and enjoy the show. God forbid, don't drive home drunk. Yeah, please don't. Please don't drive home drunk. Uh, we are not advocates. Just pick of that. up a chick at the show that's sober and have her drive you. Take a taxi to her ho- to a hotel and get a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? Throw it down. Mm-hmm. So anyway, like I was saying, Killswitch record came out last week, and I have a lot of free time at my job because I work in shipping. So I'm basically standing behind a computer all fucking day, and I list- literally listened to that album probably three or four times today from start to finish. And there's not one song that I don't like, that I skip, like, I don't skip through any of the tracks, they're all fucking killer, you, you, you don't bleed for me, fucking, in, in due time, obviously, Beyond the Flames, fucking, even the first one, the hell of me, Always was a good ballad, oh, yeah, I, Always I was a perfect ballad, up. too, yeah, I, like now, I bought the special edition, did you, did you see that? No, oh, the that, special, did you say it had four extra tracks, it had four extra tracks on it, it had two more, one was called Bloodstains, <laughs> And I can't remember the other one, but there was a, they had two live songs on there. It was Number Days Live with Jesse on vocals, and then they had uh, My Curse with Jesse on vocals live, too. And that was fucking killer. And they're amazing. It was fucking, it was badass. So um, if you haven't already picked out, uh, picked up the uh, new Kill Switch record, I think it's still on sale at Best Buy for nine ninety nine. I'm not, don't quote me, I'm not 100%, um, but it's uh, on it sale. It probably still. is. It usually is for like a week or two. Yeah, after a week or two, usually released. afterwards. I think it just got released like a what week? Yeah, last Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. So it's only been out for about a week or so. But uh, definitely, uh, they are coming in back here in June. They just played State not too long ago. So they're definitely coming back in June. So we're, uh, I know Pete and I are going to be heading out to that show. My buddy Travis, we're going to be traveling out there. And uh, hopefully we're going to be seeing that show. Plus, with Seven Dust coming as well. Seven Dust comes uh, end of May, May 24th, if I remember it right. <coughs> so, Seven um, Dust, uh, yeah, it's in May. I want to say 5th. I might be wrong about that. I think no 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 I think it's uh, I think it's um, May 24th just listen to the last podcast the date's in there for yeah it's in there so the date for the <coughs> uh, Mayhem Fest is in there too Seven Dust concerts in there Clutch concert date is yeah. in there Opeth concert date is in there mm-hmm. um, <coughs> another thing we were we were going to start talking about tonight too is a lot of metal heads were covered in fucking ink you know, I'm. I got two full sleeves. My chest is covered. I got my legs done. You know, the the full the full bore. <clears throat> and um, Pete, you got a you you got a half sleeve. If I, if yeah, I, I got a right. half sleeve, <laughs> and I got a chest piece, and then I got a little star in the back of my neck. Star. Yeah. Like a nautical star. Yeah. Pussy. <laughs> what the fuck? What, what, what the, my girlfriend and I have the same tattoo. Oh, that's sweet. So I have something to aim for when I'm back there. <laughs> <laughs> At least you made it cool at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I redeemed myself, yeah, fuckers. You totally, you totally get your metalhead card back, all right? <laughs> 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 oh, I fucking hate my laugh too. Um, yeah. So anyway, a lot of a lot of people, like I said, we were, uh, 
we're not a lot of people are not big into metalheads, so like they think just because you're covered in fucking ink, you're some kind of fucking deviant that you're gonna you're some drug dealer yeah. or you're fucked up. And a lot of times, like I know me personally, I've lost out on getting gigs, like jobs and stuff, because I got ink. Like I got it on my fingers, I got it on my hands. Mm-hmm. You know, I got two full sleeves, and like they're, they want you to cover it up if you're working with the public, which I, I still find kind of redundant because, like. It's like I say, ten years ago it was a different story. You know, if you were covered in ink, like people still kind of looked at you funny, but it was really, it was really, really bad. Like I can't think of anybody I don't know that doesn't have a tattoo somewhere. I think that's like it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Like it's <laughs> it's a good thing for you know prospective job seekers, but it's also a bad thing because now everybody and their fucking grandmother has a fucking tattoo. Yeah, we we used to stand out. Like that's the yeah. Thing. Before it was like <clears throat> tattoos were like you know very taboo. People didn't want to get it. They didn't like the permanence of it. Well, for whatever reason, people think that if you damage your temple, your body, you're not going to heaven or something. That's another Fight Christian like that. bullshit Fuck belief. That fucking bullshit. So anyway, it yeah, like you were saying, it has changed, but it's kind of that double edged sword. You know, a lot of people are just. It's yeah, they don't like want they don't, they don't want you basically like when you go to an employer, they don't want you they don't want customers seeing seeing you as the face of their company. That's I think that's part of the problem. So like they see the, the yeah. because they they know that people have that stereotypical mindset where to me it's the same kind of discri- discrimination if you were to give somebody of Asian yeah, descent or black or who's African American. To me it's the same damn thing. It is discrimination, period. Like, um, why should it matter what I have on my skin? Like, that's why I don't have sleeves. That's why I never finish my sleeve. And when I do my other arm, I'm only going to do a half sleeve for now, because I don't have that <coughs> level of job security where I'm okay with putting yeah. my my neck out like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, growing up, I want so bad to finish and do f- my rest of my sleeve and then do another sleeve and just do whatever the fuck I want because you know who the fuck are you to tell me what I can do yeah, with exactly. my fucking body? But at the same time, you have to be. An adult about the situation and say like you know like you were saying look listen you're going to be a representative of the company exactly so you're you're really at the mercy of whoever's running the company and whatever their standards are you know like I work at a hospital and um, yeah you work at you work at yeah, a hospital in Tarpon that, which is now owned by a religious organization yeah. so there's that you know they're buying hospitals now fucking spectacular <laughs> doing <clears> the, <throat> doing the healing. Something, whatever of Christ. I don't give a shit. I'm just a good, trying off. to be a good person, trying to help people yeah. out. I don't give a shit Use about your head. Jesus. So but to... anyway, I understand where they're coming from. I get it. So, you know, like when sometimes I, for a while I used to wear uh, sleeves that I could roll down. So it was like a three quarter, mm-hmm. you know, and then after a while I was like, eh, you know what? I don't, it doesn't stick out that much. I don't think it does because yeah. honestly, if you didn't tell and me, and I actually you wear you scrubs a little bit larger than I can wear anyway, yeah. like just because it's comfortable and I'm in it all day and it gets hot, so I wear slightly bigger scrubs, so that tends to hang down enough to where most people don't notice it, and generally if somebody does notice it because of where I work, I just don't pull it up enough to where they can see the giant pentagram on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> but the also cool thing is me and you used to work together at the same hospital. Yeah, and so, it was interesting that you yeah. had that. And like, but I worked at nighttime when nobody was there. Yeah, did they I, give you a little bit of shit over your tattoos too, or no? Not really. No? They they they, they kind of said if you know we hear a bunch of complaints, then yeah, we're gonna have to make you cover them up. Yeah. But I never I got out of there before the religious bullshit happened. Um, I never really got too much flack from them. Like I went to, I went to the interview in short sleeves, so like they knew it from the fucking get go. Yeah. So I didn't. It's not like I tried to hide it. Like I'd rather yeah. like every interview that I've been on for any job that I've had. <clears throat> excuse me. Doing that a fucking lot tonight too, um, is I always wore short sleeves. Is I don't I don't like lying to people. You know I try to be as honest as I possibly can be. Yeah. So like you might as well know ahead of time. Like but <laughs> most of the jobs that I've gotten have been jobs that don't really deal with the public or they make you work overnights where you don't see a whole lot of people. You know. Yeah. Like you're like yeah. When I worked, I worked in the kitchen, like you know nobody's gonna see you except for your chef and then, you know three or four other guys that you're working with. Or like when I worked nights at the hospital, like who, I worked five to one thirty in the morning. Who the fuck's gonna see me then? Nobody. No. You, me, and you fucking saw each other. That's the way I feel about it too. Like I'm not part of the nursing staff, so I have very, very little, if any at all, interaction yeah. with patients or the or the public, other than some guy who's lost in the hospital asking me where to go or, or yeah, something like the, that. Yeah, where's the where's the you know where's the lunch room or you know where's, yeah, where can I get out of here? The ER yelling because they want their shit. Where can I turn my needles in? At least they're responsible in turning their needles. My in. interaction is with other employees. And I've always just been kind of stubborn and say, well, if you don't like me, go fuck yourself. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, it goes back to just kind of, I've always kind of felt like, you know what, it's it's better off to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. I, I get it, people don't 
accept it to the point yet where I can get full sleeves and be comfortable about job security and things like that, or, or not having to struggle to find another job. Yeah. So you know, that I'm, I'm going to do me. my I've thing. Been down that road. I'm going to play under the fucking, you know, play under the ropes there, and and uh, you know, when the time is right, I'll I'll finish my shit off. But the cool thing about having half sleeves is you you, you kind of get judged one way by not I wouldn't necessarily say by judge, but like if somebody with full sleeves kind of is looking for somebody that he can. Like myself, is kind of looking for somebody that he can kind of relate with a little bit that you know yeah. has the same kind of mindset that you do because, like when you're when you're a certain when you are a certain way, like a metalhead or just somebody who's into that kind of stuff, you know, you don't really you, you kind of wonder who your allies are and who you can you know say certain things to and who you can't say certain things to, and when like and you're in that kind of setting, but if like you you're you're walking past somebody every day and you kind of like you notice they got like a half gimmick up on their shoulder, like, all right, now I can, I can, I can go to this guy and we can probably relate pretty well because we might be both into the same shit. Yeah. Now, does that happen in every case? Absolutely not. Because then you'll find yeah. those assholes that have fucking, you know, stupid stars and shit, like stupid shit. Barbed wire, bro. Barbed wire tattoos. <laughs> and like, I see another fucking barbed wire tattoo. I am just going to lose it. I'm, I'm going to take sandpaper to their fucking ass. My really tattoo mean. originally was really fucking stupid, but I had to make it legit. I just couldn't live I, with it. I'll be honest. I just had this fucking tribal outline, <clears throat> dude. This deal right here. Just this outline oh right here, this fucking deal that's colored in now that has color. Yeah, that's all I had was the outline for that. Oh my my, gosh. my dad knew some guy. I went to his fucking house and he did it in his fucking garage. Gross. <laughs> that's fucking gross. I know, man. Don't do that. Yeah, don't. Yeah, for people out there listening, Have some please don't get sense. don't get tattoos. I was in eighteen, garage. you know. I was like, whatever. So when I got older, I was like, dude, I need to fucking do something about this. Yeah, it looks fucking stupid. Just an empty outline. So. I went and got the fucking giant pentagram right smack dab in the fucking middle of it. Go big or go home. Got it going. And I was like, let's do some fucking skulls. Let's do a giant fucking eyeball. Let's do a fucking demon because I'm such a fucking dick. So that's that's what I went with, dude. And then we're like, you know what? I want to bring it up to all the way. Let's do some fucking eyeballs up here. That's awesome. But um, but like that's the cool thing is like I remember my first. I got I was like everybody else. My first tattoo was a fucking tribal tattoo on my arm, and I fucking hate it. That's the only one that I regret. It's the only look, dude. Fucking this is terrible. It's, it doesn't even go all the uh, way around. Dude, what a fucking something. pussy yeah. I was. I got this when I was eighteen. Like it's some. I, that is a bitch in here too. Oh, like when sucks, I got the inside dude. of my arm. Once you get up inside towards your armpit, Bro, like right in here. My other sleeve goes all the way into my armpit. Like everybody's like, oh, the collarbone hurts. I'm like, I didn't give two shits when yeah. I was up here. It hurt more in here. Yeah, exactly. Like. But another thing with me is I decided to get when I decided to get full sleeves I I don't say I don't I don't regret it I just wish I didn't come with all the baggage I guess that's probably that's not regret I think yeah no I just it's, didn't come with all if the, anything you regret that society is still so fucking stupid and, exactly. and so judgmental but exactly. you know I I get where you're coming from I mean like I said I want nothing more than to do what I want to do but yeah. I also understand that I got my own shit to take care of and I got, I need to have a job I'm not going to be like the rest the bills, of these people man. in this fucking works. country that don't want to fucking do anything with themselves yeah um, so you know I just got to keep my head straight and do what I got to do at the time when I got when I started to get full sleeves I was working at a titty bar and I was making two grand cash a week easy and I had all this money, and I would just go out and blow it. I would go blow it. This is no shit, Pete. Listen to this. I worked at this strip club here in, in, in right here in Pasco. I used to get tipped out more by the dudes that would walk in than the fucking women. I mean, that, and that was easy, easy. At least, I mean, the guy, people would come in and be like, you know, regular customers, obviously. They'd be like, hey, Chris, man, you know, I'll give you 100 bucks, bro, if you just point out a girl for me that I can have a good time with. I'm like, have a good time with or have a good time with? Uh, you know, put, throwing the quotes up in there. He's like, no, I mean, just something to chill, somebody to chill out with. I mean, some of these old guys, man, they got a lot of money and they're fucking lonely because, you know, they got, yeah. you know, they got, they had wives who fucking, they got divorced from before and they're afraid to trust anybody again, whatever their own issues are, you know. But they would fucking come in and be like, hey, man, I'll give you a bunch of money. You just pick out a girl I can hang out with the whole night. And it would really just depend on who I felt like deserved the money. If I know she didn't have a good, if she didn't have a couple good nights beforehand and she, I know she needed the cash or whatever because, I mean, just, just so you know, it's fucking almost kind of like working in a restaurant. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, Strippers are fucking people too. I mean, they have their own shit going on, but like they—they're not all fucking scumbags. Right? God bless strippers. Good people. God bless fucking strippers. Oh man. So just give me a second. I, I gotta think about boobies for a second. Right. And strippers. Okay, good. So, <laughs> but uh, I would pick out a girl and be like, "Hey, you know this guy wants to hang out with you for the night. You know, do you mind?" 
And I'm like, oh no, he's cool. You know, he's been here before. And like, a guy will throw me 100, 150 bucks, and and then every time they go in the champagne room, he, you know, I I get the money for the room and for the girl, and <clears throat> and then he would, you know, give me an extra 10 or 15 bucks. There's been, I can't even count how many nights, bro, that I walked out of there with four or five hundred dollars in cash in my pocket, like in a fucking wad. Nice. And like, my rent at the time was only like 350 bucks a month. I didn't have a, I didn't have a car payment. It was, and the rest of it was just blow money. And I would literally go to fucking Ybor City with all my friends, rent a limo. Like my days off for Sunday and Monday, so fucking I would rent a limo. I you know I have two thousand dollars in my pocket, and we would just go and fucking get shit face fucking hammered and do dumb fucking stupid stuff all night Sunday. <laughs> and then the limo would take us all home. And I would have and I would go and literally blow twelve thirteen hundred dollars one night, no problem, nice. easy. That was that was pretty standard par for the course. Counting the limo and shit too. And, or I would try to get money from the guys, but hey man, let's pitch in twenty five dollars for a limo because you know, so it was like four hundred bucks. So, and then I would just, but I knew like come Tuesday, two three hundred dollars right there, and then I would get a check from the bar for like seventy five bucks a night. <laughs> I'd be like, what is like I don't even this, this I paid my car insurance for like four or five months. Nice. Yeah, like and that, and that happened every week. I, I my only regret about that job is I wish I would have kept the money. That was it. Like I wish I would have kept. Yeah, the you money. can make some bank real quick, dude. Doing he was that. fucking crazy. Like even the, like I'd walk, I'd come get out and count my money at the end of the night, and the girls would be counting theirs. And I'm like, how the fuck are you making more money than us? I'm like, take care of your customers, man. This is how it works. You know, you gotta keep <laughs> bringing in. The guy that owns that McDonald's. I don't even have house. to take my clothes off. Yeah, I don't, have to, I don't have to shake it. my dick or anything. I don't have to helicopter anybody. <laughs> all I gotta do is fucking be nice, kick out the assholes, and fucking make sure you guys are okay. That's all I gotta do. Good times though. Sounds like a good gig to me. No, oh. but like I said at the time, I was. Making a lot of money, so I'm like, well, let's get fucking tattoos. So I started getting one, and then I got another, and then I got another, and I got another. I'm like, well, let's fucking sleeve it out. So, like, I fell in love with Japanese art, basically, and that's how my first sleeve is a lot of Japanese art. And basically, like, the artist um, who owns, his name was Mitch. He, he owns Legendary Tattoos in Tarpon Springs. Um, he's the one who did my, he's, that was his first sleeve, and he just kind of worked around what I already had and just, you know, designed something cool. And, uh, yeah, dude, I get, like, I got, some, most of my tattoo goes down in my armpit, and I got it, like, in my ditch. Like, it's a full sleeve, so it fucking sucked. It was fucking <laughs> terrible, bro. I, I, like, it was so bad. Like, I can't remember, I just remember, like, right here, like, you had to go over, like, like in, like, in your ditch area, like, yeah. your bicep and your tricep meat, or your, um, forearm meat. Yeah, you kind of have to, like, tighten to, It's to like, that's, it that's yeah. the worst pain I've ever had in my life. Like, absolutely worst pain. It's, uh, you just, I, I was shaking fucking by the end of it, because, man, you're okay? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm not gonna pass out, but it fucking hurts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but like at the time, like I was working in titty bars, so nobody ever really saw me anyway. So it was like working. At, I worked seven till three o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> which I don't do that. What's now. your longest session? What's that? What's your longest session? Five or six hours. Uh, Easy. Yeah. I, I don't think I go any longer. Like, I think this one was three hours. Yeah, it was like four or My five hours. My chest was eight. Most. But you know, not counting breaks and stuff, it was like four. Or I five took a hours. break in the middle of that though. But yeah, eight's yeah. the longest. Like, and I actually kept, wanted to keep going, but at the time we were both. I think we both kind of were like, eh, right, yeah, yeah let's go. just call you know, it a day. You kind of, you kind of give that vibe. We're like, all right, well, you know, let's let's just get this over. with. I remember here. when I was getting my arm, the one of these pieces done. I think they were like basically three hours each, <coughs> more or less. I was cool. like, I go next door real quick to Beef O'Brady's and grab a beer and kind of bleed out a little bit. He's <laughs> starting bleed. to get fucking swole. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, can you go bleed out and let these uh, let this zombie fucking hooker fucking push some of this shit out of here? I can't finish this zombie tits. <laughs> 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 fucking zombies, dude. Like, <laughs> That's a good segue. Yeah, that was a good segue. Wasn't oh it? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting we're getting better at this, folks. Don't 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 think around. We practice. Trust me. We got a little something at the end of the show to for you too. Um, <laughs> I was gonna do it right now, but no, I'm just to. save it. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if anybody hasn't noticed, there's zombies are fucking literally almost taking over the planet, bro. Like, I mean, everybody's into the Walking Dead or or just like zombies in general. And like, I don't think maybe five or six years ago, the Walking Dead couldn't have been a show. Like, I don't think it could have lasted. Yeah, we were actually talking about this before the show started. I was yeah. trying to think, and we were both kind of trying to think. When did all this really kind of? I definitely head. do think like the Call of Duty, like the world, like the Call of Duty World at War, when they had like the Nazi zombie thing. Yeah, like which I went as for Halloween last year. But um, <clears throat> excuse me, fuck, my mouth fucking all fucked up. You gotta drink another beer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Um, but uh, I definitely do think the Call of Duty game had something to do with it. it was like they had the Nazi zombies, and you obviously if anybody who's ever See, played I think the game. It, I think I think it was before that. Like we were talking about, if you think about think about like some of the movies. And you know, like we're what was some of the ones that we were thinking of that came oh, out? Oh, Dawn of the Dead and fucking Dawn Twenty Eight Days Dead, Later. The remake, Twenty Eight yeah. Days Later. All those movies kind of came around the same time, pretty much. But I, I think those movies just kind of like you know put it up on its stepping stone, 
And then, like, when the Call of Duty games came out, throw it in there. I'm going to save it for when I bring some shit over. Oh, okay. If they don't have any six-packs. Um, I definitely do think when the Call of Duty games came out, they kind of brought it up to the next level because everybody played that game. Like, I remember everybody asked me, dude, did yeah, you play, the zombie, like did you play the zombie level yet? Yeah, did you yeah. play the zombie level yet? Like, no, I don't, I, I don't play, I didn't play that game, so. <clears throat> it has gotten to be a pretty big deal. I mean, there's even, like, you know, there's, like, Tough Mudder and the Spartan Race. Well, there's, like, a zombie version of that now yeah, called Run like, for Your Lives. You Run for Your Lives, where they actually have makeup artists make up fucking zombies, and they fucking chase you down. Yeah, you can, you can either be a zombie or one of the people running, and when you get to the end, if you're a survivor, you get, I don't know, something, a medal or some shit. I would totally but once you're zombie. done and you finish, you can go back and be a zombie <laughs> and attack the others. <laughs> so that's that, that that's like, fucking And awesome. then you all hang out and fucking drink beer and listen to some band that they got to play or something. That's Like, to me, that's that's a weekend. Yeah. Like, that's not? a vacation, dude. It sounds fun to me. Like, that seems like a great Friday, Saturday. You mm-hmm. know, like, you take off work on Friday and go do something like that. I like that. That's fucking cool. Like, I would totally be a zombie. For those of you that don't listen to metal, there's actually the uh, Blues Festival, I think, in St. Pete this week, by the way. Yeah, I think so too. There's Friday, the Fun Shine Music Saturday, Festival Saturday, coming Sunday? up too. Something like that. I think Johnny Lang's. I think Johnny be there. Lang's on Saturday, dude. dude I want to go to that so bad. I dude. would want to go. Like I got Ethan on Saturday. Normally I wouldn't have him, but Mel's oh, yeah. fucked up. So damn. I'm going to. That I anyway. wish I could. I'll just drive go. myself and get. Fuck, dude. Johnny plastic. Lang is, is fucking am- is amazing. I've always dude. wanted to see Johnny. He's our age for fuck's sake. I think he's fucking actually younger dude was like than us. Seventeen or something, putting out a fucking CD playing. Yeah, like he was sixteen when fucking Lie to Me came out. Madman, dude. Was he? He was sixteen when Lie to Me came out, dude. Wow. I still have the album in my truck, actually. Thank you. I remember the person that got me hooked on Johnny Lang, the same person that got me hooked on fucking Def Leppard, was a girl named Hannah Glick, and she lives in Michigan. She's a good friend of mine, and she actually went to high school with one of my cousins. And uh, she, I remember we were driving somewhere, we were to go see some movie, we were going to go see 8 Mile. And, nice. Uh, with, like, we were all working in security up there. So you listen to some real music real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were going to go uh, see I'm 8 Mile, because we were all fan, Eminem fans anyway. I'm... Regardless of whether I think Eminem's a great fucking rapper. Definitely one of the top ten of all time. Out of all the rap bullshit that I've listened to over the years, for whatever reason, I I like his the most. Probably because he's a twisted son of a bitch I think like so, me. too. It's just funny. Like, lyrically, he's fucking ridiculous. Lyrically, he's fucking amazing. But, like, anyway, <clears throat> Hannah's like, she she put on some CD. She's like, she goes, I'm, I'm going to play the CD if it's all right. I'm like, I don't care. So I was like, I'm like, what the hell is this? And, like, it lied to me. It was playing. I'm like, holy That's a fuck. Beast like, album, dude. And she's like, oh, it's Johnny Lang. You probably wouldn't like it. I'm like, I fucking dig this shit. What are you talking about? Dude, if I could play and, uh, guitar like that. Like, that's fucking Christ. insane. I would so, fuck my guitar. Uh, thank you, Miss Hannah Glick, uh, uh, for uh, opening my eyes up to Def Leppard and uh, Johnny Lang. So uh, definitely, if you're in the area, go to the Blues Festival this week, and you can see real musicians playing real music. I thought you wrote themselves and fuck some badass fucking musicians, musicians. Yeah, there are some guitar players, drummers. Unreal you know, acts that you're just like, wow, how are these motherfuckers just not... Get all known. over, yeah. It's, yeah, but the, well, everybody on American fucking Idol gets a fucking movie deal or yeah, some shit. <laughs> but back to zombies. Yeah, back to zombies. Um, so, but uh, I definitely do think that zombies really kind of started with, like, obviously the 28 Days Later, and then the... Um, I think movies just reinvigorated. I think it, like, it was always kind of out there. they good zombie movies. Like the Evil Dead franchise and shit like that, so... Yeah, the Evil Dead, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Deadites, which yeah. actually that remake just came out and I want to see that so bad, mm-hmm. so don't fucking ruin it for me, anyone. Yeah. Um, that remake supposedly is better than the, the original. I heard the same and thing. And it looks... I've seen the Red Band trailer, I've seen numerous trailers. Oh, really? I haven't seen them yet. It looks fucking good. Yeah? So I hope... I hope I get to we'll go check that out. And they don't give me blue balls. Not, we'll, we'll, have like, we'll not have a mandate, but I think we'll just we'll sit and we'll sit and like have a seat between us. Yeah, because my girlfriend doesn't want to go see it. She's kind of like it's not, you know, I think I've just burned her out movie. on fucking horror movies. She's yeah. actually scared now because she's watched so I many did, of them. With I'm not, me. <laughs> I wasn't big into scary movies. I'll she be wasn't here. originally. Like she originally would watch them with me. Now yeah. she's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, this is getting weird. Stop it. Uh, but I I did see Dawn of the Dead when it came out. Was I think I was with some girl at the time, and I wanted to try to impress her because she was into that too. And, which another dumb thing I did for women, and uh, <laughs> uh, or to get some ass, basically. Yeah, we all so, do that. Um, but uh, I did see my first kind of scary movie the other day. My friend Chrissy came over, and uh, we watched Sinister together, which is fucked up. Like I and she's sitting on the couch with me, and I am jumping, literally jumped out of my seat probably four or five times. It was like, good though. It was a great movie. Ethan yeah. Hawke was basically who I named my son after. So um, uh, it was did great and it's totally fucked up plot. If you got like little kids, like mm. like a five or six year old, seven year old kid, it's fucking creepy. Dude, there's dude. nothing creepier 
than a fucking creepy kid, dude. Exactly. <laughs> like, it was just creepy, creepy. It was, it was a really cool story, too, like, as far as, like, the visuals and stuff and, like, how the houses looked and... It was just it was just a cool story that pictured the the uh, what the hell is that word? Uh, filmog fuck what's that word? Like that's cinematography. Uh, cinematography was great. There we go. That, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Pete. That's why you're on the. That's podcast. why I'm on the show. That's why I know words like cinematography <laughs> and can, titty fuck <laughs> and tusk fuck and um, tusk fuck. I can just make yeah. words up that don't exist. <laughs> so uh, yeah, definitely. I think that's. Um, uh, I'm gonna throw a new movie title at you if you ahead. haven't seen it. Audition. No, if you no. haven't seen that, if you have seen, is it, it a scary you, movie or is it, it's is a it Japanese a... movie? Oh, because uh, the Grudge was a, a woman... Japanese movie too. Yeah, no, that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, see, audition. Audition. That's, that's I haven't fucking, seen that. That is balls deep in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a great movie. Fucking you in your. At the soul. end of it, you'll be like, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> and that's like you know how that movie's like that end. Every once in a while, I'll throw a movie title at you. That's probably how the movie's gonna end with you going, "What the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was it was my first kind of scary. It wasn't gory because I'm not big into gore. Yeah, but it was kind of spooky. Like I don't normally watch. Like I'm I'm a comedy guy. Like I love. See, if we go watch Evil Dead, you'll see gore because supposedly they used however many thousand gallons of blood. Whatever. In that okay, movie. that's fine. But I'm, I just wasn't big into, big into gore. I mean, I, I can. I'll break you in, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm going to be the uh, gore movie bitch, basically. So. <laughs> Grab your ankles. We're going yeah. deep, balls deep in gore. <laughs> oh, jeez. Look how gullet. Here it comes. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop till I brush the back of your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Those are nice molars, man. <laughs> Don't bite. <laughs> but uh, zombies, you know, what I, you know what? I think the reason that zombies are... Like I said, I know it's kind of reached a fad level, and I know a lot of people are kind of burned out on it, and they're like, eh, fuck zombies, fuck walking oh, whatever. dead. I get it. I think it's just the most plausible out of all horror Yeah, I definitely think that could stuff. happen. It could happen. It probably could. I, I mean, mean, who it knows? It very much could be a virus that just reanimates your body or keeps the basic vital things alive, mm-hmm. like the uh, primitive brain I stem think in, and like, stuff I haven't like seen, like, read the book or anything, but I think it's kind of how World War Z is, like that movie coming out with Brad Pitt. Yeah, I think those it comes books out, are supposedly hardcore. I've never read them. A couple of friends of mine at work said, <laughs> excuse me, said they read them and they said they were badass. But, like, I think the movie with Brad Pitt comes out in May. That should be good. I, I can't see it really not cool. being good. I think it's kind of like the same thing, like the the I Am Legend principle, where some kind of virus that's starting to take yeah. over and everybody is fucked up. Which, if you ever seen I Am Legend, that's a cool movie with Will Smith. But that's a that was like a basically a remake of a movie from that Charlton Heston did called the Omega, Omega Man. Man. Yeah, yeah. movie's that, that, and that, that, that the awesome. Omega Man was fucking amazing. That, yeah, that movie's like great. It's, an, it's a movie from the seventies, and if you're definitely into that kind of deal. It, like it's not if really you can tolerate for- the not crazy fucking special effects and yeah. actually watch an older movie but Charlton Heston does a great job it was kind of like a few years later it was probably about 10 years after Planet of the Apes came out and you can tell he aged a little bit but it was still a really great movie it's basically on the same premise yeah. as I Am Legend I think Will Smith did an amazing job in I Am Legend as he does with all things I mean he's, I don't think he's ever really made a really bad movie he says maybe seven pounds, but that was about that was about it. I didn't see it. I heard it was really. I I only I saw like parts of it. I didn't see the whole thing. Hancock was like, eh. Hancock. I thought Hancock was cool was just because line. the special effects were kind of cool. Yeah, like, it was kind of him throwing the whale into the yeah. Into the ocean, like, that, that was cheesy. Cool. It, was like, it was it was all right. It was, I but, guess if you're but that what made that movie was Charlize Theron though. Well, yeah. I mean, Jason Bateman's fucking hilarious. I don't know where he came out. Of, I but. still think Scarlett Johansson's the hottest bitch ever. I could definitely. I, I definitely agree with you, but I, I am totally... I'm not normally into blondes, but I think Charlize Theron totally does it for me. Like, I, like I'll like i totally make I'm it... I'm not exception. normally into blondes either, but there's something about that... I'm a brunette guy all day. Like, if you Nordic, got black hair and blue eyes, like, and a sweet Nordic ass... Blonde. Like, to me, if you got black hair, blue eyes, a sweet ass, and can fucking sing metal to me, and so, or sing the metal with me in the car, that's it. That's all I need to hear. Like, I am perfectly okay after that. Or even a redhead. I'd be happy with a redhead, too. Like redhead, yes. Fucking blue Fair or green skin, eyes. Rare head, redhead, oh, freckles. Man. Dude, like, oh, jeez, hold on, just give me a second. I don't like Zoe Deschanel. I don't know everybody's. I don't even know who her. that is. I don't know. I just want to punch her. I, I have no idea who that is. She's a. F- I don't like. Is it like some TMZ cunt? Because no, I have no idea. she's a fucking bitch that's on some fucking show that's on TV. She's on a no. bunch of shit. You'll know her when you see her. Cause no. She's shoved down your throat. I just don't think she's. I don't. I don't. I don't want to look her up. I'm not going to say she's ugly because I'm not. Well, I'm sure like she's an that. attractive woman. She's yeah, probably just annoying just, as fuck. I, like, I could think of about 50 other women that are hotter right now. Ugh, gross. That are in Hollywood. I just don't. Does she, like, have a CD? She's, like, or? almost like the poster child for the hipster generation. 
Ugh. Yeah, it's like, oh, Zoe Deschanel, Ugh. and they, people dress like her. It's like, dude, she's not, she kind of looks like a kangaroo. <laughs> does, she, <laughs> does she have a pouch? I mean, the, it, it, does she carry around a fanny pack that looks like a pouch? She always looks like she's, she's pouty, like she's fucking, I don't know. I don't Pissed know how off? to explain it. I'm just not so bad. into her. Like, I just don't think she's as hot as I'm Well, since we're on the subject of, of chicks, like, are you a tits or an ass guy? Another segue. Hey. You're welcome. <laughs> Dude, I'm Dude, the element today, yeah. bro. Yes. Uh, so, are you a tits or an ass guy? I would say ass, because I... Would say I, ass too. I, I don't really care about titties. Like, I'm not going to say I don't care. Dude! Dude. Just, like, as far as preference goes... Like a chick, like if a chick is hot, she's hot, and if she has like yeah. A or B's, that's not going to stop it for me. Oh, obviously no. Like, but if she has no ass, I'll be like, ah. I love fucking asses. Titties don't matter to me. <laughs> Sorry, so I we're someone on the same wave, wave uh, shit, almost spilled the beer. wavelength here. Like, we would have to get a straw, suck that shit up. I, I can't even begin. Like, all, all, a lot of women say like all men just want is big boobs. That is absolutely like the farthest thing from from the fucking truth. Like I'm a legs penis. and ass guy. You want to know why? You can buy fucking tits. Mm. Can you buy ass implants? That Obviously is very so. true. But well, you can, but you can you can, can you buy ass implants? Of course you can. It's but not going to be the real. It's deal. not going to be the real thing. I. Oh man, Jesus Christ! You know what I like, I, and this I is probably care, what you I can like care less too. how big your tits are. The Venus dimples, in the lower back. Oh, dude, the thumb the thumb holders. Yeah, they're the oh. Venus something or others. They're I called. don't even. Uh, you, you're getting a fucking. It's like men have the Adonis belt for your inguinal crease. Oh, the crease, sex lines. The inguinal crease. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the Adonis belt. And then for is, that, females, is that what it's? What the fuck are you? Yeah, it's all, all named after Greek gods, bro. We're getting back to Tarbin. <laughs> and then if you go to the chicks, they have the dimples in the back. Oh it's yeah. It's called the Venus dimples or something. They're called. Oh, dude. oh, dude. If I see those on a chick, that's that's game fucking on, bro. She can have a face that looks like it got run over by that truck with the green goblin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> In Spider Man? No, the truck with the Green Goblin on the front in Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like that truck could run over her face, peel out, and then back over it. And I wouldn't care because she had those dimples oh, in her back. Dude. Right behind Just, her spread right above her ass. Like I don't even like do I look at your face when I talk to you? Obviously so. But I'm not gonna look at your chest because honestly I could not <laughs> care fucking less how big your titties are. Well I look are. at cleavage because I'm a dude, but like yeah, I don't I don't care that I mean, much about titties. Don't get me wrong, having big big big, big boobs is fucking amazing. Yeah. But it's definitely not a necessity to me. Like I'm I, always cautious about big titties. Because it's like it's like we're unwrapping a president. A president, you know? President. And and the fucking jack in the box jumps out at you. I don't want to pull her shirt down and have giant pancake nipples, bro. Oh god. And that like just you, like she needs some maple need syrup out. on her titties or exactly. something. Exactly. That's a, like you, then you feel the need to go out to the refrigerator and get some butter and maybe some sugar Man. and fucking put like I don't want I don't want your areoles to cover your entire like, boob. Like puffer puffer yeah, they're like giant fucking UFOs in the sky and you just can't take your eyes off them, they just mesmerize you, bro. I don't I mean, want to flip like, you over anyway, because I don't want to stare at your pancake nipples. <laughs> Yeah, then you're going. Then you're turning around anyway. Then yeah, exactly. Then we're going like, doggy right. style because your giant pancake titties look like a pair of eyes looking at me. It was freaking me out. And then you got because then they get all veinies, veinous around the pancake okay. nipples. It That's looks okay. like giant eyeballs. And, and fake boobs taste funny. Like they just do. I don't know. I never. They, ate. They taste I never funny. ate a fake boob. Like you never had fake tits in your face. No. What? All natural, bro. If mm. I wanted fucking silicone in my face, I'd stick it well, in the back of the fucking computer. <laughs> But well, I guess I working a real at, woman. I guess working at strip clubs for as long as I've had. Well, yeah, I guess you I've seen my fair share of fake boobies, and they taste different. I don't care what anybody says. Is, is it the same skin as what used to be there? Yes, it is. But guess what? They fucking taste funny. It tastes like you're sucking on a Barbie doll. It tastes tainted. It just tastes not natural. It tastes like a lie. It tastes like yeah, exactly. <laughs> it tastes like false promises. That's what it tastes like. What do, what do false promises taste like? Fake boobies. This woman got a fucking tit job at the hospital the other day, and they fucking they're like, Nurse oh, yeah. No, just some person ended up getting a tit job. The one, phys- you know, surgeon that was there was doing it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be a twelve-hour case, so we're going to bring twelve to- hours to get tits." I was like, "Jesus Christ, we're just getting three tits like that chick from fucking uh, <laughs> the from Total, Recall? Total Recall." What the yeah, fuck? Free, but, Is she you know, getting available. a third tit put on? What the fuck? Well, I'm not free. I'm just available. Six hours per tit. What the fuck, dude? See. Stop. You know what, girls? I'm going to just live with your honest. titties. Men really aren't... Like, if you're hot, you're hot. And, okay. If you have A or B cups, a dude's not going to be like, oh, no, it's just Sorry, not going to work because your tits small. are too small. And if they are, then fuck them. And another idiots. thing, too. Let's, 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 let's do this uh, as a precursor. 
Okay, you may be hot, okay, but if your personality sucks, I I don't want to be around you. I really don't. If you yeah, have, I don't care how you have nice a bad your fucking, tits are. I don't care how great your face is, how great your tits are, how cunt. great your ass are, is. If you, if you want to be a fucking bitch and have a bad attitude, I'd rather go hang out with some ugly chick who fucking has a great attitude and is fucking smiling the whole time. I'd rather hang out with her and fuck the shit out of her and fucking deal with your bullshit. Because it's going to be gonna more do, fun to fuck that chick anyway. I think, and she deserves it more. That's I, it's Like George Carlin said it best, I never fucked a ten, but in one night I fucked five tubes. <laughs> right? There you go. And, but this, like, I'm not saying, like, whatever. I'm not saying, like, all women are like that. Please don't think that way. But if you have a bad attitude and you're hot as shit, good fucking luck, okay? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm the fucking most handsome fucking guy on the planet. I, you know, I have my fair share of uh, problems, just like everybody else does. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but if you, like I said, if you have a bad attitude and you're hot, stop it, okay? You need to get your fucking shit together. Uh, but you if you're donkey punch, if actually. you're like a six or a seven and you got a great fucking attitude, I I'll hang out with you and party with you all fucking day till the cows come home. So I'd much rather be with somebody who's fucking upbeat and ready to fucking go and down for anything than some uptight fucking cunt who's sitting over there fucking wondering <laughs> who's who wondering what that girl's got the same coach bag as as I do. Go fuck yourself and your stupid. It's high bag. maintenance. Don't be yeah. high maintenance. High maintenance fucking bitches. You know what's fuck you and your stupid coach bag. You paid four hundred fifty dollars for a fucking purse. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're gonna be high maintenance. Take care of your own shit and get a fucking job where you can do all that bullshit. Then, like, and if you're all about fucking money and shit too, like, no, uh, uh-uh. I'm, I'm, I don't do that. You need to go out. If I'm working hard for my money, you need to go out and work harder for yours. It's a fucking two way street, you know. And that 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 makes me sick about seeing all these fucking housewives at home, fucking not doing shit and fucking going on blowing their dude's money. Like that's fucking pitiful. You should be a fucking ashamed of yourself. If you're that way, I don't want to know you, and I don't want to be your friend. So don't fucking tell me about anything about yourself. So if I find out that you're fucking just lazy and collecting off your dude because you're too fucking dumb to go out and do anything else, or you're going to school, like, no, uh, I understand like you've been if you're going, going to school for twenty years, if you should like fucking rule the world. If, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to school, then okay, you got a legitimate excuse. Right? I understand that you're trying to go better yourself. I, I'm perfectly cool with that. I have lots of friends that are in that position now. They can't work because they have to go to school full time, and I have total respect for that but if you're not in school or not doing anything and you're fucking sitting at home fucking not doing shit and just collecting off your dude i i think you're a pile of shit and i'll go ahead and say that and i'm not afraid if i lose friends because of it you need to go out earn your own fucking living and do what you got to do if uh, my money is not your money and your money is not my money i'm not going to come begging for fucking you how would you like if i did that so yeah so fuck that dude <laughs> <laughs> we went off on a little tangent there. I'm sorry. Ran, that was kind of the rant of the week along with the uh, tits and ass thing. But definitely, uh, we, we you got two both ass guys here. And I, oh, God. if you got a sweet ass and fucking can dark hair or red hair and fucking can know, know a couple Kill Switch songs, I'll be perfectly happy with you. If you have me. a nice ass, friend me on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a nice ass, I have an inbox that needs to be filled. Okay, so uh, with ass, with with ass pictures. Just send. I don't even care. You don't. They don't even have to be naked. Just send me something like you wearing a like a uh, swimwear. Oh, swimwear. What the fuck is this? Swimwear. A yeah, don't suit. send me nudity because then I don't have to feel bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't send me nudity right away. At least let's let's, let's talk first for a little bit. They should be like multiple emails, like each one's less clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Start by taking your clothes off and then putting them back on, and then, then we can go from there. Make me earn it. <laughs> earn it, man. Oh, jeez. See, what? how much time we got here, buddy? Uh, yeah, we're pushing like 52? 53 minutes. I think we got a lot in for this show. I think I think cutting it back down really kind of saved us. Yeah, we did what we wanted to do. Um, we talked about what we wanted to talk about. I want to throw a quick shout-out to a band that I want everybody go to ahead, check out. Man. Maybe I'll dive balls deep into it next week. Uh, Bellacore, B E apostrophe L A K O R, Australian band, melodic death metal. Oh, I love it too. Like, is it kind of like In Flames? I haven't heard them. Yes, yet. it's it's fucking oh, really? great. I love it. Is it is it like In Flames style where it's got singing along and stuff like that too, or no? No, it's just all. He death keeps metal. his vocals uh, more on the unclean side, whatever you want to call it. He doesn't really do clean vocals. Oh, that's right. But I, I love care. it. I don't care. I fucking dig it. But it's In Flames kind of style though, right? A little bit. A little bit? Okay, I'll, I'll have to listen to it. I yeah, it. if you listen to it, I think you'll like it. It's good shit. <clears throat> I, f- I just randomly found it the other day, and, and uh, it's like one of those bands where you listen to it, you're like, holy shit, how come nobody knows about these fucking guys, dude? Yeah, I know, man, it's fucking crazy. You can find them on YouTube? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can look them up. Like I said, it was uh, Bellacore, B-E, apostrophe, L-A-K-O-R. You can look them up on YouTube. They got a bunch of shit on there. 
uh, one CD that I was, uh, I think it's like Set in Stone or something is, uh, one of the other CDs that there's a ton of songs on YouTube from. Um, there's a <clears throat> newer, uh, newer CD that they actually just released it has like a Red Riding Hood cover of the wolf and you'll see the deal. You know <laughs> what I'm awesome. talking about, dude. They, uh, but, uh, music, music wise, I like them. I think, can I, can I, think I talk one minute before we close out yeah. for the night? I heard these guys on the internet the other day. I found them on YouTube. They got they're really fucking badass. I think you need to go look them up. They're called Hellacious Discharge. Like I think a name like that, dude. Like it sounds like you got some kind of disease, but and then like you're infecting everybody else with it too once you explode. And uh, yeah, they have a Facebook page. They're uh, you've heard of them too. They're, they're the ones, yeah, their uh, websites. Yeah, you're, you're telling like me about them last tempor- week. Temporarily shut down. They had some kind of issues. Fucking server problems. Uh, yeah, I don't know some weird shit. But yeah. if you go on uh, YouTube or uh, on Facebook, I'm sorry. They have a Facebook uh, site called it's it's Hellacious Discharge, Discharge is the okay. name of the band. Yeah, you'll know when you see it because it's a picture of an electric chair. And hopefully they get the site back up soon. Yeah, I think so because I, the I, site they, was fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was awesome. The website's fucking crazy. Like I, it just went down a couple of days ago, and we actually saw it last week. That's why we're talking about it now. And it was, we were reading some of the stuff. And it's just fucking crazy. Like their background that they came up with with how the band was formed. It's fucking nuts, dude. They were like, I was laughing my shit. ass off the whole time. It was fucking crazy. It was awesome. We're going to be... Uh, <clears throat> so go definitely check out Halacious Discharge and Bellcore. Bellacore, is that right? Yeah, Bellacore. Bellacore. Uh, definitely go check those guys out on YouTube. Um, we're going to be doing another band next week. Uh, uh, guys are good friends of mine. A band called Low Life. And uh, they're definitely... Uh, they're they're starting out real small. They're playing. They're they're from uh, they're from Michigan. I think you can see some stuff of theirs on iTunes, right? I think so. I'm not sure. I I, I talked to uh, Brad, who was the bass player the other day, and uh, he said they're they're getting ready to load their shit up on on iTunes here pretty soon. So it's iTunes is a fucking asshole, and they they make you go through. That's why I fucking hate Apple. There's they have everything fucking ass. I know they always make you fucking charge you for <clears> shit. Yeah, Hellacious Discharge and Low Life. I think well, those Low are Life we're going to be talking about more next week. Very so. under the radar bands. Yeah, you know. very under the radar, very low key, but definitely guys you need to check out. And we wouldn't tell you anything. We wouldn't try to steer you wrong. So definitely go check out these guys and uh, and uh, go see their show. So uh, Pete, I think that I think that we can wrap it up for today. What do you think? Um. Yeah, I think we hit everything we wanted to. We kept it cool. under an hour. We got our goals set. We had awesome segues today. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did the segue. <laughs> our segues into our topics. We are literally back went with. right into the next topic. If it you were looking at our, our outline here, what yeah. we wanted to talk we about. We actually prepare for the show, folks. So uh, we have a whole outline right now of what we're going to talk about, things we're going to bring up, and different things, just so we don't fucking forget, because when you're doing this, you have a tendency to ramble on and forget what the fuck you're talking about. So uh, anyway, anybody's out there who uh, is going to be listening is listening to this on YouTube or whatever the case may be, we appreciate you listening. Um, hit us up on our Facebook pages if you know Pete and I personally. Um, uh, make sure you go and you know tell, show us some love on the face on the Facebook pages. Let us know what you like, what you didn't like, and we'll uh, we'll try to make everything better. We each time we're getting better at this, so keep. Uh, Keep us. Uh, what the hell is the word? I'm keep giving us feedback. Keep giving us feedback. Like I said, we're not perfect. We don't claim to be perfect. So uh, we're going to be uh, doing this for a long time to come. We hope, and uh, we could use every bit of uh, feedback we can get. And uh, we're going to hopefully have a good time. Hope you guys had a good time tonight. So uh, next show, I think maybe we'll, we'll pull some bands out of our ass again. For yeah, I think so. We're gonna be, we got different topics going on and shit. So definitely next week's show, we're going to be Tuesday or Wednesday night. Uh, depending on our work schedules, so, like we, Pete and I have different jobs during the day. Trust me, because if I could do this shit fucking full time, believe I'd it or do not, it. I know we're fucking awesome, but we actually don't get paid for this. <laughs> yeah, we don't get paid one fucking dime for this. We do all this on our own. Accord. But no, we love it. This is fun, man. Yeah, this is a good time. So, we get a chance uh, get, to fucking get active. Get active. Go, uh, like I said, go show some love on our Facebook pages. Definitely go to the Metalhead Offensive, uh, the Metalhead Offensive Facebook page, and go ahead and like that, and you get all of our posts and shit we're listening to. We're working on our own website too, just as a yep. as a gateway. To, yeah, work on our own website. That's going to be coming up soon too. So, uh, and if you've got any feedback, like I said, either hit us up on our Facebook pages, or you can you can email us at the uh, metalheadoffensive at gmail dot com. Um, we both have links to that to our phone, so we can get back to you right away, and we can talk. And we back go to and our forth. Facebook page. There's actually a preview link for the for the website. Exactly what we were, what we were looking at, uh, and you can go there and and and, dude, fucking. Give us some suggestions, you fuckers. Yeah. Give fucking, us some beers. Give us some bands. Give us some bands. I want to discover some new shit that I haven't heard before. That's yeah. what I love about listening to exactly. music. Exactly. And beer. And don't be afraid to fucking tell us if we suck, if you like the show. We don't care. Like, we'll take every comment in stride. We don't take anything If we personal. suck, we know we suck. Fuck you. But give us a reason. <laughs> well, this is not bad for our... <laughs> it's like it's a woman bad. saying, eh, we just don't... Yeah, fuck no, you. We, Why? We, we need to see other people. <laughs> you know? 
Um, yeah, but this is our third show. We're definitely getting better at it. So we're we're still ironing out some kinks, but we're going to get it, folks. So um, you're definitely the people that are listening now. We definitely you're definitely on the uh, cusp of uh, <laughs> something great. So stay tuned, stay with us, and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. I can smell your 